everyone. I'm Kim Gailey Fitting. I am Herm Gailey's daughter. Uh, we just wanted to provide an update for you all. Many of you have been kind enough to express best wishes for my dad's shoulder surgery, and that just took place on February 8th. The surgeon was the chief of shoulder surgery at Johns Hopkins, and he's very good. He found that not only the rotator cuff was torn, but they also found that the biceps tendon was torn about three quarters of the way through. And the bicep was the only reason that my dad was able to do the things that he was doing. And it was clearly on the way out, so the surgery was absolutely necessary. And so far, it seems that it's been very successful. The doctors are very pleased um, that my dad had continued to keep to his strength up and remain active and keep his motion good too. And they think that that is going to help him during his recovery. So we wanted to thank you from myself, from my mom, from my dad himself. Thank you for all of your kind wishes and all of your support. So we've already put up a video about different headgear that you may choose to use on your young horse, or at least things that I've used now or in the past. Wanted to just touch on how you adjust and hook up your training hackamore, because many of these are set up about the same way. So first thing, you want this nose band to be right at the point on your horse's nose where it starts to be cartilage. In other words, up here, it's, it's hard, it's bone. And you get way up in here, you're not gonna have a whole lot of feel. You get way down in here, you're just mashing on soft tissue, and it's actually fairly delicate down in here. But about in that transition zone, where the bone starts to thin out and become cartilaginous, is where you want it. So you can see, it's not down at his nostrils, it's not halfway to his eye. It's just to where when you activate it, it's right there where the bone becomes cartilage. With training hackamores, I think universally, you want a brow band head stall. They're more secure. Uh, a single ear is just not gonna have the stability that this brow band will. I also greatly favor two buckle brow band head stalls because as you can see you've got a buckle on the right buckle on the left and I don't have one jacked up real high and the other one pushed out real far I like to try to keep them at about the same level which you can see they are if you look here it lines up just around his eye now that's it could be above or below his eye, but in this particular case, it's right around his eye and they're equal. So you don't get any of that effect by having one side a lot longer and the other side shorter. Uh, the other thing that is real critical with these, and I'll maneuver him around a little bit, and I'll ask my camera lady to tell me if I'm blocking this, but you have what's called a Fiador here. That's F-I-A-D-O-R, Fiador. I think that's a Spanish word. And I guess what it means is the thing that keeps your halter from falling down, or your hackamore from falling down. Any rate, it's cut out of a, made out of nylon rope. And I'm unhooking it. And you can see when it's unhooked, you see how that hackamore just sort of, it sort of lays there like a dead squid, where if you have it tucked up, that keeps the bottom half where it belongs. And importantly, you're not gonna pull it down across his lips, which you wouldn't think you could do, but you darn sure can. So if you were leading your horse or pulling him off to the side and he was going the other way, you, you know, if he was pulling the wrong way, you can wind up with this way down catching on his teeth and so forth. This eliminates that. It just keeps this, and it also takes away some of that play that you don't really need. So there is a right way and a wrong way to tie these and adjust them. So 
what you'll see is, whoa, buddy. Whoa. Relax. There is a loop here. Now, the way this particular hackamore is made, that loop is set a little bit further under the horse's jaw area than what I typically would prefer, but it lets you get this adjusted like you need to. But if you can see, there's a loop, and it's similar to the loop that you have on a regular rope halter. So you want to take this piece here, and I'm sort of trying to do this blind so I don't block the shot. You take this end through the loop. Then you adjust that to where you have the bottom of that hackamore where you need it. So that you don't have too much play there. Now you don't need to have it terribly tight, but you need to have it to where this is not flopping around and where it's not going to go down and get up over his chin. Then you take this, and here is what you don't do. You're going to tie that knot, but you are not going to go up here and go around there and go down through up here above the loop because that will pull through. What you do is just like you would do with a rope holder. You take this, you go around the loop, and you tuck it back through, but it pulls down on that loop, and you then have a solid connection. So that's the way you want to do it, not that other way that you're above. And then actually through trying to do this illustratively, I kind of didn't do it very neatly. Back through here, around here, pull it down, you're done. Tuck away your end. And you've got that to where it's solid on his face. It's at the right height. Your head stall's adjusted right. It's even. And your horse is going to get a more consistent feel and you're not going to have the chance of pulling this into your horse's mouth or across his lips. So those are some thoughts on how you want to adjust your training hackamore. I think they're a great thing to start a young horse with, uh, but it really makes a difference if you have it adjusted right. So hopefully that'll be helpful and you'll have a training hackamore and when you hook it up, it's going to be just right. Till next time.